So the daily problem is longest path with different adjacent characters. You can pause to read it. But the idea is that we're given this tree and at each node we're, it has a certain character associated with it based off of a string. And we want to trace the longest path possible where we're not repeating two characters in a row. So here, if we started at zero, for example, we can't go to two. Our path could never traverse zero to two because they're both A. But we could go to one and then we could go to three and we can see that's a length of three. It happens to be the longest. Um, theoretically, we could have like one, three, four, something like that, or five, two, zero, one, three, but all of those would involve a repeating character. There's these two Bs and these two As, so we can't traverse these. And we can see in this example, one node can have more than two children, so it's not a binary tree. Um, so let's just jump right into it. I like this problem because uh, it's a hard problem, and it's a hard problem because it has a lot of moving pieces. It's not necessarily some giant algorithm, some graph algorithm, or some hard math thing that's difficult to conceptualize. It's just a lot of things you have to work through. And I think that's really good for building confidence um, around your problem solving skills. And I think it also is a pretty smooth learning curve for problems like this. You can, this is the kind of problem where, and maybe close this video and try this, but you can kind of just throw yourself against the wall over and over again. This is a problem where that will reward you, whereas other hard problems, maybe not so much. Anyway, so we're given this list parent, where parent at i is the parent of the ith node. So for example, parent at 1 in this example means node 1 has a parent of 0. And if we think about the nature of a tree, every node will only ever have one parent. Uh, and if we look to parent at node 0 is always negative 1, because one of the things we're given is that uh, node 0 is always the root node, which is convenient. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is turn this into an adjacency list. Uh, so what I'll say is adj is for range length, or I'll say range n, and then we'll define n to be length of parent. We could say length of s too. The time complexity of which one you choose, if you said length of s or length of parent, I think it's the same because length is returning a uh, property of either this list or this string, and I think accessing that property is uh, obviously O of 1 for both, but it should be like pretty much the exact same time complexity, um, even beyond big O notation. So we've created the adjacency list, and then we're going to say something like for A comma B in enumerate parent, and what enumerate does, let's just say break, and then we'll say print, uh, for i x in enumerate, and then let's make a list and say 10, 5, 8, 4, 3, 5, 6, whatever. Uh, we'll say print i comma x, and then let's just return zero. So what enumerate's doing is it's saying print what's the index and what's the value at that index. So at index zero, we got 10, at index one, we got five, and so on. And that happens to be really convenient here for this idea of this parent list because the index is the child and the parent is the value at that index. So we can say something like uh, uh, adj at uh, b dot append a. And I'm actually going to swap these because syntactically it uh, makes a little more sense to have a be the one that's the parent and b be the one that's not. So now if we print adj, we should get a full adjacency list here. And we can see one problem though is that zero is, is um, always gonna be a child of the final node. So here node five is gonna lead to zero, which we don't want because Python interprets negative one to mean the last, uh, the last index um, where zero is the first, negative one is the last, negative two is the second to last. So we specifically, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could say something like parent at one colon this, but then this actually doesn't work because uh, uh, of the way the enumerate function works. Um, so what we could do is just say something like uh, if b equals zero, continue. And now when we're given the adjacency list, there's no 
uh, zero is not incorrectly added to the last thing. So now what we're looking at is this adjacency list, which just a quick refresher uh, shows that zero leads to one and two, one leads to three and four, two leads to five, and so on. So now we have a way to access all the child nodes from any given index that's the root node. Um, and this will work for any number of child nodes. So what I'm going to do is a recursive depth first search, just like the last several days. So we'll say define depth first search. And another thing I'll mention here with this adjacency list, um, because of the format of the data that we're given, we're not given a list of edges. We're given a list of explicitly which node is the parent and which node is the child. Uh, we don't run into an issue where one sees zero as adjacent to it, and we have to um, input the parent node into the depth first search or anything like that. So the depth first search can just take the node. And the idea here is it's going to do two things. And this is sort of the operating algorithm in this, uh, in this solution. It's going to uh, modify an answer. So we'll say ans is one. And then in the end, we're going to return answer. Um, and we actually want to say self.answer is one, um, which has to do with how like um, variable scope works in Python. Uh, if we just said answer equals one, this is like saying, this now refers to one. But then here, if we said something like ands plus equals one, uh, it might even throw an error if we said, let's say just like that first search zero. Yeah, because it says, uh, uh, what the hell is answer? That's not in this scope. But if we said something like print answer, we're still referencing answer, but now it'll, oops. But now we can see it'll it'll see this answer now, even though just before it was saying what the hell is answer. That's because now we're referencing it, and Python looks through your code and says, uh, "What are you referencing?" Like I can I can say print n here, and it'll be smart enough to know n is this. It's the number of nodes, so it'll print one and it'll print the number of nodes six. But if I said um, answer equals answer plus one, it's going to go. That's in a different scope. Um, so you must not be referring to this answer because uh, we don't actually have any way to change this this variable, what this is pointing to in this scope. So anyway, that's a long-winded explanation for why this has to be self.ands so that we can modify it in here. And now if we said self.ands is self.ands plus one, this is now a property of this class solution. And now if we said print self.ands, it should print two. So that being said, this step for search, each recursion is going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is calculate the distance, the maximum path distance, including this sort of zebra stripe thing that we have to account for, that um, no two characters can be adjacent. It's going to calculate the maximum path going through each child. Uh, and it's going to keep track of the longest path and the second to longest path. And the first thing it's going to do is just return the longest path up the chain. So for example, here, it's going to say, well, this doesn't work. So if I tried this path, I only have myself. That's just one. Uh, this does work. So now there's a path involving two nodes. And I'm going to pass that up to zero. And then zero looks at that and goes, this path doesn't work. So if this was it, it would just be a path of one. But this path does work. And this is, I was given two when I called this depth first search recursion. So now I add one to that and I have a path of three here. And then the second thing it's going to do is it's going to potentially uh, overwrite ANS, ANS. And ANS is going to represent the maximum path. That's what we're eventually returning. So if it finds a maximum path that's longer than the current maximum path, longer than the current ANS, then it'll overwrite ANS with that. And what that's going to look like is it's going to say, uh, what's the longest path and what's the second to longest path? Here, the, the, the path is linear. There's not really any like going up the tree and back down or anything, so we don't run into it. Um, but here we do. We have C, A, and then B. So what this is going to say is, uh, OK, call depth first search on this, which means call depth first search on all of these. And then for this, say, what's the maximum length? Uh, of this path. Well, there's nothing below this, so it's one. This is one, and this is one. And then this says, cool, well, this path doesn't work. So this path is, if I chose this path, it would only be one, which is my own node, zero. 
but this path does work. That's a length of two. And this path works. That's also a length of two. So uh, if there was something above this, I would say, hey, the longest path going from here is a length of two. Uh, but there's nothing above this. Uh, so also what I'll do is uh, sort of execute this void aspect of the function where I'm altering self.ands. And I say, uh, hey, this is the longest path I've found. So for every node, um, it's not only returning, it's going to return up to its root node, the longest path from it to a leaf node, uh, or the longest path it can muster. Uh, and then it's also going to overwrite ands with the combination of the two longest paths it can muster, because that's going to be the, uh, if there were an answer, it would be something like that. So let's just write it out. We'll say something like um, for child in ADJ at node. And then eventually what we're going to want to have is something like if child, if s at child is equal to s at node, continue. If they're the same letter, just don't even bother. But before we do that, we want to say something like path, this is going to be the length of the path of the child node, equals depth first search at child. And the reason why we want to call this depth first search before we continue, um, it costs more time. Maybe we could get away with not calling this depth first search. But you can imagine a situation where there's A, 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 and then a bunch of stuff below. So if you cut it off right here, if this was after this continue statement, then this wouldn't look past that. But theoretically, you could have uh, some long path that has nothing to do with the root and is, would be blocked off. So we have that. And then what we're going to have is something like longest and second longest. So I'll just say first, second equals zero, zero. And then um, we'll say if path is greater than first, and second is first, so we're just keeping track of the second longest and the first longest paths. First equals path. Elif path is greater than second. Second equals path. So now we're keeping track of the longest and second longest path from any given node to its um, child nodes. Now that we have that, the first thing we want to do is um, see if we've encountered a path going through the root node that we're looking at that's longer than our current answer path. So we'll say something like answer equals max of answer against self.answer. I always forget that. And first plus second plus one, because we want to include the node itself that's being traveled through. Uh, and then the other thing we want to do is just return first plus one. And that's the longest path for some other node that's going to incorporate that as potentially the longest or second longest path going through that parent node, we want to return the longest node linearly going up through the current node. And that's pretty much it. Oops, we don't want to print this. It's going to slow us down a little bit. But this is pretty quick. I mean, it seems like it's mostly in the 90th percentile range. Yeah, I got a 97 earlier for the thumbnail. If you wanted to do this iteratively, I can't imagine it wouldn't be slower. Uh, you'd have to transfer everything that you're storing in the call stack into a normal stack, and that would involve a lot of storing tuples and such. So that's this problem. It's not, um, ooh, it's not the uh, most complicated at any given point, but there are several things that make this complicated. You're given a really weird list that you're not typically given. Um, the idea of choosing the two longest paths and and incorporating them together in order to see if it's greater than the current answer, and then passing the longest one up the chain to see if that's greater than the answer. That's like, I mean, that's like the key. If you're pointing at one thing that's like the algorithm to come upon, it's that. Um, 
recursive pattern. Uh, and that's not super simple to come upon. And then the other thing is this twist on it that we can't have two nodes of the same character be adjacent in a path. Um, that none of those specific qualities of this problem are all that complicated, but together I think it's it can be kind of overwhelming, especially if you're not comfortable with representing trees and data structures in an array. Um, you could do something like class tree node and then have uh, self.val is something and self.left and self.right or self.children, um, which could get just really ugly. Um, so you kind of have to just be fluent in representing data structures as an array. Um, all that being said, I think it's a pretty fun and rewarding problem.